It's Tuesday, October 31st, 2023. I'm David Ellis with the Ellis Report on Capital Media HD 99.3. The Ministry of Health in Barbados reports that up to October 16th, there were 647 suspected cases of dengue fever in the country. And between October 14th and 27th, three more people are said to have died from COVID. Environmental issues have resulted in the closure of the St. Matthias Magistrates Court for two weeks. It has left staff expressing concern about their health and created a backlog of work, including the payment of maintenance. Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness is lauding the country's comprehensive disaster response mechanism, which he says was on display yesterday in the aftermath of a 5.6 magnitude earthquake that rattled the island. The earthquake, which lasted approximately 30 seconds, was felt in eastern Jamaica and several other parishes. The Prime Minister says it caused some damages, but we wouldn't classify these damage as significant to have caused any serious dislocation. Nevertheless, the experience has been very traumatic, particularly for our young children, who were in school at the time. In Trinidad, eight men have died within the space of 24 hours, the latest in a spate of killings in that country. At the same time, the country's president has called out 100 Defense Force Reserve officers to support the police between now and February. Carnival is scheduled to take place on February 12th and 13th, so there will be heightened national security on the streets. The president issued the proclamation dated October 30th, stating that she has called members of the Volunteer Defense Force for a period of 123 days, with effect from October 30th to February 29th, 2024. The Israeli military says it is hitting Hamas targets in all parts of the Gaza Strip as well as Hezbollah positions in Lebanon. Heavy bombing by Israeli warplanes could again be seen in the north of the Gaza Strip this morning, sending up plumes of grey smoke. An Israeli military spokesman said there had also been strikes elsewhere and described ground troops as slowly expanding their operation. Meanwhile, Hamas fighters said they'd ambushed three Israeli vehicles firing anti-tank missiles. In a reminder of a possible spread in hostilities, this morning air raid sirens went off in Alat on Israel's Red Sea coast. The alert came after Iran-backed Houthis in Yemen were previously accused of trying to launch drones and missiles at Israel. Meantime, the United Nations Security Council has been hearing dire warnings about the situation inside Gaza. This is a spokesman for the Red Cross and Red Crescent. The situation is uh, simply catastrophic. It's catastrophic because there is no safe place where to stay in Gaza, so civilians don't know where to go and, and literally how to survive, where to find food and water. And then when it's coming to our hospitals, ambulances, we can see the lack of medicine, lack of medical equipment, uh, and also lack of fuel. In Antigua, community activist and long-standing member of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, Tani Rose, has died at the age of 77. The weather forecast says that in western and northwestern districts, we can expect a mix of sunshine and clouds with brief showers mainly during the afternoon. Elsewhere, it will be partly sunny. I'm David Ellis with the Ellis Report on Capital Media HD 99.3.